I got my Magpar here, and the context of this is you're going to have some options to pick from weapons in the Elder Scrolls Online going forward. Reason why is, on a Magic DPS character, you can see I have 33,000 max magic. The way the game's going to scale in Update 33 is, it's going to look at your highest offensive stat regardless if the ability costs magic or stamina. Why is this relevant? Some of the hardest hitting abilities in the game for a back bar weapon are, you guessed it, stamina. Some of the best back bar weapons are, you guessed it, stamina based. Deadly Cloak with Black Rose Prison weapons. Stampede Maelstrom Marina weapons. And then you already have the Fire Unstable Wall. So what we're going to do is a comparison of each. Give some pros and cons as to why you would use these weapons. That way you can adapt and change your build in PvE. Step one is using Unstable Wall of Fire. This is the common back bar um, damage ability that you're going to use as a magic user. The strengths of this is with the Maelstrom Arena weapon on my back bar, it increases light and heavy attacks damage uh, by 1353 at gold quality. So as long as you're keeping Unstable Wall up every 10 seconds or so, you're going to get a lot more damage for your light and heavy attacks. Pound for pound, this probably won't do the mo most damage, but it will do really good if you main maintain this on your back bar because it amplifies your light and heavy attacks. That's why people are using it. Another thing is this. Why do people run infused back bar enchant with a weapon spell damage enchant? If no one's told you this yet, the reason why you do this is because even when you bar swap, your weapon damage enchant will continue to proc. It's the berserker enchant. You see how it falls off? It reprocs. It's about to fall off again and it reprocs. So as long as you maintain that back bar um, ability, you're getting a massive amount of spell or weapon damage. This is why people run infused with weapon or spell damage enchant if no one's ever told you that before. Let's go ahead and do a pound for pound comparison. So the gear I'm running is Deadly Strikes, Bahase's, Kelnar's. Now I'm gonna cast it one time. I'm not gonna do any light attacks. One cast, no light attacks. Let's see what damage it produces. Okay, unstable walls up first. And we're done with it. It's a trap. <laughs> but you can see I did 36,000 total DPS. So the unstable wall did 20,000. The unstable wall of fire did, let's see, 11. That's the explosion, 11,000. And look at the burning status effect, 5,000. I mean, this is why you run charge trait and that burning status effect is so valuable. So unstable wall, the pros are it's going to increase your light and heavy attacks if you're using the maelstrom. And you can fully charge heavy attack as a magic user on your back bar and get magic pack. And also you can use the destruction staff ultimate. That's a benefit. The passives in the destruction staff as well benefit you and you can proc the burning status effect. Now let's switch gears and try a stamina one on, yes, a magic templar. So let's go two-hander. So the Maelstrom Arena weapon is going to deal crit damage um, after you do the charge. And it's going to bleed for 10,000 bleed damage over seven seconds on the tooltip. That's an enormous amount of bleed damage. So the Stampede in and of itself is going to do really good damage. But that bleed damage is enormous. Now I'm going to go with Infused and Sword back bar. So we're going to put that on. Now let's go ahead and slot the Stampede ability here. Put this on our back bar. And then it's going to deal 1,800 physical damage to all enemies for 15 seconds so the duration is easier to maintain with this and it acts as a gap closer though it does have a high stamina cost of 3600 on this character so we're going to do exactly the same thing no buffs no light attacks nothing we're going to charge in see what happens charge in bar swat and so we got the burning status effect here a product it looks like and it might it can proc the hemorrhaging status effect It'll be a different icon at the top if it does. Of course, we didn't get it. Unstable wall, 36,000. Stampede, wait for it, 78,000. So Stampede, the damage from the ability was 41,000. The Merciless Charge was 20, almost 20,000, 19,000 damage for that on, um, the, on the VMA back bar. Stampede looks like the, either the first initial cast or the dot did 8,000. And then it proc'd a lot of status effect. Burning, fiery weapon, poison, and sunder. 
And in all actuality, it can proc uh, the hemorrhage status effect as well. Since we were on our front bar with dual wield running burning and poison, that's why we got those status effects. Another advantage is if you struggle with light attack weaving as well, and you're not like God's gift to it, and you miss light attack weaves, consider stampede because you're not going to see the benefit of unstable wall like some of the one percenters are going to see it. User ask a question here. Yes, stampede hits hard, but did uh, being able to maintain it cost you? Okay, so that's a good question. So um, we're going to go on live server and check this out a little bit more. But remember that Stampede changed a little bit. It's 15 second duration, not 10 seconds, 15 seconds. So for the average player that has trouble maintaining really tight windows with damage over time effects, this is a good choice to, to take because it's a little bit easier, a little bit more forgiving. Because if I look at my Magpar right now, the standard Magpar bar is essentially mine, plus or minus a couple of dots. But you have six seconds. You have 15 seconds. I got a main spamble and execute. So there's two dots. Then I have 10 seconds. There's three. Then I have 10 seconds. There's four. And then I have a last one of 15. So that Stampede 15 and 15 with Barb Trap match up very, very well. So it should be able to maintain pretty good um, resource sustain with this. Again, this is theory. We're going to actually have to play this live. The point is, I think you can have some really good options. Okay, so now, now let's try Deadly Cloak. So we're going to go Deadly Cloak here in our back bar. So Deadly Cloak is a uh, major evasion. This is going to make you way, way, way tankier. The duration is 10 seconds, however. So it's not 15. It's not going to be that easy to maintain. And it does have a high stamina cost of 3,500. It deals damage uniquely kind of every two seconds, but it hits hard. Now, what you do with this is you pair it with Black Rose Prison weapons. Um, so this Black Rose Prison dealing damage with Deadly Cloak grants you Spectral Cloak for two seconds, reducing your damage taken and increasing your damage done by 6%. So those damage reduction and damage amps and uh, stack on minor and major berserk. So can you imagine running Kinraz? and having your healer run Combat Prayer? You would have major berserk, you'd have minor berserk, you'd have Bahases, and you would have the 6% running from this. Not to mention major evasion, making you much more tanky in PvE, and 6% damage reduction, which would stack on major and minor, you guessed it, protection. So the perfected Black Rose uh, Daggers is a really strong option. Now, if you do a Templar build with it, even stronger because the Adric Spear ability, you get minor protection when you're uh, channeling your spear, basically using sweeps. If you have a high elf, you get another 5% on top of that. So massive, massive, massive damage reduction. Not going to be a good fit for everybody, but just an option. So let's go ahead and see what Deadly Cloak does. So the damage on this is not going to be impressive because it's not factoring the 6% increased damage. Okay, so 22,000 DPS. Again, not impressive. We don't see all the status effects, but you need to factor in 6% damage increase, 6% damage decrease. It's an actual really strong option when you're playing in melee specific builds. To summarize, um, how I would use this information and how I would start preparing for the next chapter is... If you're going to play melee builds, um, like Magpar, Mag DK, or something like that, at least level 2H and dual wield. Arrow Barrage works as well from the Maelstrom Perfected Bow, but I can't see using that on a Mag Sork or a Mag Necro or a Mag Nightblade. You're gonna, the benefit of uh, playing at range is too strong. And remember, if you're doing trials, specifically veteran trials, Almost everyone's stacking in a tight little ball anyways and using dual wheel a lot of the times because the melee has to stack that close to hit as well. So it's not like in trials, you're just clear off on your own. Dungeons you are. Dungeons, you have a lot of mobility. You're not stacking these tight little groups for two minutes and doing parses. Dungeons, you have to have mobility. So again, a couple different options that you can run. Maelstrom Perfected Inferno Back Bar. Really good because it's going to increase your light and heavy attacks. So if you're really top tier and light attack weaving, great option. It doesn't require a target to cast Unstable Wall. That's really, really strong in VMA and Maelstrom Arena where the portals are spawning. The procs the burning status effect. You got a lot of good passives on here. So if you like your build right now and this is working for you, don't switch. But some options. You're playing in melee range. You want a gap closer that hits hard much easier to maintain you're not very good at lie attack weaving think about maelstrom perfected back bar you're still going to run infuse with a weapon damage enchant but something to consider perfected black rose prison daggers this is going to be a little bit more niche because it's harder to maintain it's 10 seconds but if you're doing super hard dungeon content and you're going in for a kill you not you need 10 seconds where you're just not going to die major evasion along with six percent damage reduction 
it's a really strong option for some builds. Too long didn't read. You like your build now? Keep it the way it is. But you're going to have some flexible options. So start considering leveling 2H and dual wield at least. Hope this information helps you. Thanks for watching. YouTube video done!